tonight you're going to hear four different fairy tales. So everyone can turn their heads to the back right corner of the Delaware building. Enjoy. Yay. The king, her father, up and cried. What a nuisance! What a life! And I must find another wife. It's never easy for a king to find himself that sort of thing. He wrote to every magazine and said, I'm looking for a queen. At least 10,000 barrels of bride and begs to be the royal bride. The king said with a shifty smile, I'm going to give each one a trial. However, in the end he chose a lady called Miss Magnolos, who brought along a curious toy that seemed to give her endless joy. This was a mirror framed in brass, a magic talking looking glass. Ask it something. Day or night, it always got the answer right. For instance, if you were to say, Oh, mirror, what's for lunch today? The thing would answer in a trice. Today it's scrambled eggs and rice. Now, every day, week in, week out, the spoiled and stupid queen would shout, Oh, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror answered every time, Oh, madam, you are the queen's sub one. You are the only one to charm us. You are the cat's pajamas. For ten whole years, the silly queen repeated this absurd routine. Then suddenly, one off day, she heard the magic mirror say, From now on, queen, you're number two. Snow White is prettier than you. Each one of us is stony broke. Which horse will 
in tomorrow's race, the Ascot Gold Cup steeplage. The mirror was very sweet and low. The horse's name is Mistletoe. The dwarves were absolutely daft. They kissed him so much, fore and aft. They rushed away to race in dough, with which to back old Mistletoe. They pawned the watches, sold the car, they borrowed money near and far. For much of it, they had to bend the manager of Barclay's bank. They went to Ascot, and of course, for once they backed the ring horse. Thereafter, every single day, the mirror made the bookie say, each dwarf and snow white got a share, and each a senior million. Which shows that Kevin is not a sin, but that he always <laughs>
cried Jack. My gosh, the giant's eating up my mom. He smelled her out. She's, she's in his side. I, I had a hunch that she was silly. That she Jack stood there gazing longingly upon the huge and golden tree. He murmured softly. If I'm going to climb that bean, a bath is my only hope. He rushed indoors, he grabbed the soap. He scrubbed his body everywhere. He even washed and rinsed his hair. He did it, he, he blew his nose and went out smelling like a rose. Once more he climbed the mighty bean, the giant sat there close to the Muttering through his vicious teeth, while Jack, Jack sat tensely, tensely just beneath, muttering loud. Jack waited till the giant slept, then had along the swampy crabs and gathered so much gold as where he was an instant millionaire. A bath, he said, does seem to bay. I'm going to have one every day. <laughs> Get ready. I didn't know Jack and the Beanstalk ended that way. Anyway, our third story of the night is the story of Little Miss Red Riding Hood. But does she make it to her grandmother's house? I don't know. Let's find out. Run right up the Delaware building. As soon as Wolf began to feel that he would like a decent meal, he went out to of Grandma's store. When Grandma opened it, she saw the sharp white teeth, the horror grin, and Wolfie said, May I come in? Poor Grandma was terrified. He's coming to eat me. <laughs> and she was absolutely right. He ate her up in one big bite. But Grandma was small and tough, and Wolfie went, That's not enough. I haven't yet begun to feel that I've had a decent meal. He ran around the kitchen yelping, I've got to have a second helping. Then added with a frightful ear, I'm therefore going to wait right here till little Miss Red Riding Hood comes from walking from the wood. He quickly put on Grandma's clothes. Of course, he had eaten those. He dressed himself in coat and hat. He put on shoes. And after that, he even brushed and curled his hair. Then sat himself in Grandma's chair. And came the little girl in red. She stopped, she stared, and then she said, What big ears you have, Grandma. All the better to hear you with. What great big eyes you have, Grandma. All the better to see you with. He sat there watching her and smiled. He thought, I'm going to eat this child. And pay to her old grandma, she's going to taste like caviar. Then Little Red Riding Hood said, What a lovely furry wolfskin coat you have on, Grandma. No, that's wrong. You forgot to tell me what big teeth I've got. Eh, no matter what you say, I'm going to eat you anyway. <laughs>
until we ate the pig white bat and carefully kept the tail to the left. We wandered on a joyful bloated surprise or surprise for soon he noted. Another little house for pigs, and this one had been built of pigs. Wait.